Hello and welcome to the episode 277 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Today, our spotlight goes to a fresh start in Germany, the Beatles' first appearance on Ready Steady Go and a visit from a friend. On the 4th of October 1960, after 48 nights at the Indra Club, the first Hamburg Adventures slash residency of the Beatles moved to a new club, the more prestigious Kaiser Keller, another venue owned by Bruno Koschmeider. It was certainly an upgrade, but it wouldn't have taken much. The Indra was way too small to accommodate the number of customers it had every night. The air was stale, the lights were too soft for a club, Koschmeider didn't bother to change them when he switched the place from a strip club to a music venue, and the furbishing was downright filthy. The Beatles, with Pete Best on drums and Stu Sutcliffe on bass, found it difficult to perform adequately on the bigger stage in the beginning. Unused to the space, they were ill at ease and their first show tonight was uncomfortably stiff. They would regain their bravado in due course. Two years later, in 1962, the Beatles, now in their definitive quartet lineup with Paul McCartney on bass and Ringo Starr on drums, performed a lunchtime concert at the Cavern Club in Liverpool. The 4th of October 1963 marked the first appearance of the Beatles on ITV's Ready Steady Go. The program, broadcast for the first time in early August 1963 in the London area and then, gradually, on the whole ITV's British network, soon became the swinging 60s show on TV and almost synonymous with Friday evenings. The tagline of the show was The Weekend Starts Here. To have an idea of the significance of the show, you can watch the 1979 Quadrophenia film by Frank Rodham. Today's episode was broadcast live from 6.15 to 7.00 pm, although the music performances were all mimed, from Studio 9 of Television House in London. The Beatles mimed Twist and Shout, I'll Get You and She Loves You for the show, while teenagers danced around the podium where they were performing, quote unquote. They were later interviewed by show host Kate Fordyce and singer Dusty Springfield. Moving on to 1966, we find John Lennon receiving the visit of Ringo Starr and his wife Maureen in Carboneras, Spain, where he was engaged for the shooting of the How I Won the War film. Despite the presence of his wife Cynthia, John was feeling lonely, and the stars decided to stay until his birthday on the 9th of October, to cheer him up and support him. On the 4th of October 1967, while the editing of Magical Mystery Tour went on at Norman's Film Productions, John Lennon and George Harrison returned to the Ready Fusion Studio One in Wembley for another appearance on the Frost program, after the one on the 29th of September that we detailed in episode 272. Between 6 and 7 pm, the two Beatles again talked about transcendental meditation, answering questions from host David Frost, from viewers by letter, and from the studio audience before a discussion with pro and anti meditation intellectuals in the studio. The program was aired between 10.30 and 11.15 pm on this same evening. And now, if I may, I would like to offer you a matter to ponder, if not to meditate on. Supporting this podcast and this channel will allow me to focus on further productions of music-related content. If you want to know what you can do, or if you want to know how you can get the extended deluxe version of this podcast, please visit www.simonmas.com support at the end of the episode. There's a link in the description, as always. If you decide it's not worth the effort, I still love you, but I hope you'll change your mind. Thank you. In 1968, the work on the Beatles' new album continued at the Trident Studios. From 6 to 9 pm, Dennis Walton, Ronald Chamberlain, Jim Chester, Rex Morris, and Harry Clayton on saxes, and Raymond Newman and David Smith on clarinets 
recorded the score George Martin had prepared for Honey Pie. Then, between 9 pm and 12 midnight, the focus shift on Martha My Dear, with Paul McCartney recording piano and guide vocals and then a drum of a dub. Having completed the task, another string and horn of a dub recording took place. Bernard Miller, Dennis McCowell, Lou Sofie and Les Maddox played violin, Leo Birnbaum and Harry Mearskog played viola, Reginald Kilby and Frederick Alexander played cello, Leon Calvert, Stanley Reynolds and Ronnie Hughes played trumpet, Tony Turnstall played French horn, Ted Baker played trombone and Hal Fries played tuba. Leon Calvert also played flugelhorn. The arrangement was again prepared by George Martin, probably from a private demo recording of the song made by Paul. George Harrison also took part to the overdub recording, playing his Les Paul, although his output is not clearly audible in the final mix of the song. Finally, between midnight and 4.30 am, Paul recorded a proper lead vocal track plus some hand claps for Martha My Dear. The session came to a close with Paul recording the Now She's Hit the Big Time line on Honey Pie. This concludes the dances today. If you want to join us tomorrow, we'll focus on the release of the Beatles' first single. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.